Hello to the Chat Chamber podcast by RGSL. We are very glad to welcome Jans Betjes, who is the press secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So, good morning, Jan. How are good you? Good morning. Doing? I'm fine. I'm doing very well. Thank you. And how about you? Yeah, I'm doing as I'm doing pretty, pretty good. Pretty, 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 I would say pretty fine. It's uh, it's late spring outside, and uh, a lot of, of course, work perhaps uh, in school, but uh, you know, getting along. The weather is better than expected, so it's a good day already, as it's May, and you never can predict what's going to happen. So your academic year coming to yeah. close, so I imagine you might be quite quite busy these days. Oh. How, how about like uh, the ocup- occupational, not occupation, <laughs> I would say, the um, the busyness of being a secretary. Are there some seasonal changes visible or is it like constant all the time? I think the most difficult thing about this is that it's very unpredictable. So you might uh, start off your day with a very uh, nice looking agenda in front of you, but you end up um, with 90% that you had no idea to to, uh, to plan for. So, uh, but then of course uh, we are, you know, when it comes to international organizations, you know that summer is usually a bit um, less uh, of a you know hectic uh, hectic time, and uh, then uh, there are some some major events. Um, but then the, the only period of year you can really specify, I think, is uh, summer, where hopefully unless something unexpected happens again, right? Then you're up and running again. Well, currently, I'm. My thoughts are driven to tomorrow because tomorrow is my bachelor thesis offense. Uh-huh. Uh, so yeah, I'm preparing for that. But today is today, so we're living in the moment. And I have a question to you. I I like to start with a quote. And there is a philosopher and writer, Will Durant, mm-hmm. and he has said that um, in diplomacy there is always this uh, part of saying nothing, especially when speaking, and it is a part of it. And I wanted to know your opinion as you're a press secretary and you have also been in a mission. Have you ever been in a such situation when you have to give a statement or announcement and you have to go round and round uh, with one, I don't know, piece of information, but you know, media are asking you various of questions. How do you approach uh, this situation? Yeah, right. Uh, saying nothing also says a lot, I, I believe. And um, saying no comment uh, makes you appear uh, more guilty than you are, I should say. So a good diplomat always uh, thinks of something. You know, that, uh, there's another expression saying that a diplomat thinks twice or even three or four times before, says nothing. Um, uh, really, you have to... Um, and I think that uh, all situations, uh, you, you can find something that uh, you can uh, uh, base your idea on. And uh, even um, because like an, uh, giving an abrupt statement, OK, I have nothing to comment on is not the best way uh, forward. But then again, you have to keep this balance because uh, if people see that you are very evasive and uh, that you are just uh, talking for the purpose of uh, talking, then it's also not sending the right message. I so, yeah, of course, uh, the situations you have all the time that uh, and especially uh, diplomacy is even more important when uh, the situation is difficult but you you need your diplomats uh, to carry out their uh, work so uh, finding the right words uh, under stress sometimes also personal uh, stress under very um, difficult circumstances is important but it's definitely a very important part of uh, uh, any diplomats uh, day and and uh, job But how do you uh, deal with stressful situations? Because I believe that in your, you know, position, it is quite, you know, (coughs) part of your uh, day. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, First... um we also try to build, especially in, in my current position, uh, my everyday work uh, has to do with uh, media relations. So I am in charge of the official position of the foreign ministry of the whole foreign service of Latvia. Um, uh, part of this is working with our uh, media representatives, journalists. So you constantly try to build that relationship. Also, when uh, it comes to a situation where you really cannot comment or you have some you know, behind the scenes information that really does not allow you to go out 
out in public. Uh, sometimes uh, you're building uh, that um, uh, relationship with the journalist is very important also to give some background information, maybe to explain off the record uh, what, uh, what your situation is. Um, many times you're also faced with uh, questions that you didn't know anything about five minutes uh, before, right? Uh, so then also you have some, uh, some mechanisms in place saying that um, you can always get back to the uh, journalist, you can look into the matter. I think the first rule is always being honest, uh, so you never lie. You never pretend that you know something that <laughs> you do not know. Uh, you always tell the truth, and if you do not know, then you say, sorry, I do not know, but uh, I'll, I'll do my best to, to get back to you. One part of my job is also um, a crisis abroad, so uh, when uh, something bad happens, um, in a foreign country, it might also be that uh, we as a foreign service, uh, we uh, hadn't uh, heard of it uh, 10 minutes ago. And maybe this journalist is the first one who has you know, uncovered uh, something important. So basically they also serve as a source of information and then we can start, uh, start uh, working. But those situations are, are interesting because you can never plan for them. There's of course also a part of the communication that is planned and you plan ahead. But most of it is just driven by the current uh, agenda. Uh, I wanted to ask the question uh, you said about preparation that you always need to prepare for any kind of speech uh, and you need to be honest if you uh, are not prepared uh, fully uh, to answer the question uh, to the best extent uh, but to what extent would you say there is this uh, uh, certain characteristic of imp well, well I would say inter uh, improvisation yes you have to be very careful with that. I also I, I like um, I like uh, making jokes a lot, and I know that in this position, unfortunately, I have to watch myself. Also, improvisation is something that I really in, enjoy. A very good interview will have a little bit of that, but you should not get uh, carried away too much. So you really try to um, uh, get focused. Uh, and there is a crucial difference, I, I believe, uh, if you have an expert um, in a specific area, or you have a press secretary who has to speak on behalf of the foreign service on any topic and of course you cannot know it all so uh, you have a new I don't know international process that is evaluating Latvia in, in, in uh, uh, one way or the other on, on a specific topic and of course uh, this is not uh, your area of uh, you know expertise as you've maybe just marginally heard about this before so you really take the time to get uh, ready you formulate your main messages you always uh, have uh, the message in mind that you want to um, uh, uh, deliver and uh, sometimes uh, it, it helps uh, also you know personal attitude and personal uh, touch uh, and it it has to do a lot also with your personality, but of course you have to be very very professional and kind of really you have you, you have another famous saying uh, fail to prepare then prepare to fail, so th this uh, this uh, I believe very much uh, in so, uh, but you can uh, and also try to be ready for the unexpected. So always uh, assume that uh, something unexpected is about to happen. Like for me today, I, has, I have no idea what's coming <laughs> next, so I'll I'll try to exercise that ability as, as well. Have you ever been in such situation when you have to, you know, give a public announcement, uh, you know, in the name of the, you know, state or ministry, uh, but it is against your own values or your understanding um, of the issue? Uh, have you been in such situation and what have you done? You just cut off your personal feelings about it? This is a good uh, question. I've been uh, very lucky so far uh, that uh, the values that the foreign ministry believes in uh, are exactly the same ones that's, that I, I share. Uh, nevertheless, there have been some situations where uh, myself as an individual, I would have maybe emphasized something uh, different. For example, when it comes to uh, Latvia's international commitments. You know, there are some things that maybe we do not enjoy uh, doing too much. But you have this commitment, you know, you have your uh, thesis defense uh, tomorrow. I'm sure that if you had to choose, you maybe would do something else uh, today, uh, tomorrow. Uh, but uh, you, you have to you have to do that. This is your commitment. And uh, I, I, I think I've, I've come across um, issues like, like this, uh, that uh, you really see that uh, there is a very, very strong commitment. It has to do with the, uh, you know, authority and reputation of our uh, government and country. And uh, even if you do not particularly enjoy 
enjoy this specific uh, activity, you will still deliver the message as a professional, as saying, you know what, uh, there might be different feelings about this uh, topic, but we, but we have to um, uphold our international uh, commitments. Uh, we have those international agreements, but uh, it, it, it doesn't happen too, uh, too often. But I, I think it's natural because uh, we might um, feel one way or the, or the other with um, many topics. Uh, uh, some uh, of my understanding has also changed uh, since I joined the civil service. First I started at the Minister of Defense, then I moved to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh, when you get to know more uh, as uh, a student, as a you know, history enthusiast or, or, or anyone else, you might have a certain uh, you know, understanding and belief um, about a given matter. But then when you work when you s on, on, on the issue, if you see how this influences your country, your relations with other countries, I think there is also a very um, important part value added to the uh, fact that uh, you might come to adjust uh, your uh, previous uh, you know, understanding of, of things. And I, I think th there has to be some certain uh, also um, uh, flexibility, but you can never compromise your, your beliefs because I, I think there, there are instances like, uh, like, uh, like that, but um, this cannot go on for too long if your inner beliefs uh, are not in line with the institution that's, that you... Uh, this is one of the basic uh, principles, I believe. You, you mentioned that you started your public service at the Ministry of Defence. I wanted to ask uh, what made you choose Ministry of Defence, but more broadly, why even public service? Yeah, uh, I uh, kind of, uh, first, actually, I wanted to become a doctor when I was in high school, so I studied uh, chemistry, and then, um, uh, and I was very happy to win uh, a regional competition uh, in, in chemistry, and I'm unfortunately disappointed my teacher, an uh, outstanding uh, uh, professor uh, who also teaches um, uh, chemistry at one of the universities, uh, Dr. Uh, Gorskis, um, by deciding that I, I would quit uh, chemistry. Somehow, I was very much involved with um, public uh, work uh, back in uh, in high school. I was the chairman of the student uh, council. I was editor-in-chief of the student newspaper. So I was really, really socially active and somehow uh, changed my initial idea of uh, going for, uh, for those um, um, uh, studies in, in medicine uh, and s somehow uh, got this idea that I want to continue uh, doing uh, that. Basically, that has to do with uh, society, politics, and uh, international politics. So I, I chose international relations. And I had uh, one of the emphasis during my studies. I also spent um, uh, one academic ter uh, term studying in Sweden. I studied peace and security studies, so I really got uh, uh, focused on, on that area. And it somehow seemed uh, natural to, to go for the Ministry of Defense, although I had in mind this idea that I wanted to become a diplomat, but I wanted first to have uh, some, uh, some area that I can focus. Um, on. And this is the way it uh, happened. I spent a couple of years at the Ministry of Defense and then I moved to the Foreign Ministry. But I've done also other things. I worked as a teacher. Pretty much everyone in my family is a teacher, so <laughs> we enjoy teaching. You know, <laughs> those, those who can, they, they most probably do. If the, and those who cannot, they, they, they teach. So, and um, and I, I've done some other things as, uh, as, uh, as well. And I, I think it's, it's good that you have um, a certain profession or the area that, uh, that you have focused on, because being a diplomat, you will have to change uh, those areas. Every three, four years, you will change uh, the, the, the topic, and uh, your, uh, your desk will change, and your, your country, and, and even the continent uh, will, uh, will change. So there is good that you have some, some solid basis, maybe, that you can always, maybe at, uh, from time to time, to come, uh, come back to. What made you choose uh, history as your master's field? It, was it related to um, international relations, or uh, because I know that you know for a diplomat, it is also important to know history. And it, when you study international relations, you realize that a part of it is also history. And if I remember cor correctly, you wrote on Bush's doctrine. Yeah, my bachelor uh, thesis. And and masters on the Congress of Vienna and uh, the concept that we all share, but I, I believe is uh, it, it uh, has to be a little bit uh, adjusted. Uh, so I, I tried to look into the, uh, the the concept that we 
mainly share that you know the Congress of Vienna was a huge success, and then the Paris uh, Peace Conference was a huge uh, failure. Uh, to, to look uh, a, a bit uh, deeper in, in, into the matter, but you are very right. I, I think I, there are two reasons. First, I discovered early on that uh, you have to study history and international relations and uh, the best practice. It's all about um, uh, history, and even if you do not study history, you have to <laughs> study, and it, uh, you, you always uh, come back to it. So I, I, I know that there are some students who study international relations and they say, you know, I really don't like history. Then, quite honestly, I do not understand the choice <laughs> then because you have to um, uh, you have to know. You, you most probably don't have to be a professional historian because this is a different profession. It was very interesting for me to join um, other students who had studied uh, history before because I hadn't. So I, uh, it was uh, not a, an easy move for me to move from the international relations and then to join the, uh, the master's um, uh, program. And the second thing I think I, I share with my grandmother when she graduated from um, high school, uh, she had the highest um, marks in all the subjects except uh, for one Latvian uh, uh, language. And this is exactly the topic that she chose for her studies. She said, you know, I know it all and this area I have to focus a bit more. So that's why I'm going to study this. And I think this was uh, also quite similar for, for me that I, I felt that I, I, I have to get a better understanding of things. And I think that's, um, and I studied uh, for my master's degree here in Latvia. Um, uh, I, I think that uh, Latvians are very good uh, when it comes to history and we have uh, excellent, um, uh, excellent faculty uh, there and uh, so you can uh, really learn, learn uh, a lot. You said that several members of your family are in the teaching, the, well yeah, they are teachers. That's right. uh, my uh, question is, would you say that there is a certain element of teaching in being a press secretary, you need to teach a lot of journalists how to perhaps see things? And um, informal <laughs> teaching, uh, maybe, but I, I think really um, I would say that five, six uh, interview requests out of ten uh, for me end up uh, without giving an interview. Uh, and not just because I say, you know, no comment, which I try to say uh, not at all, <laughs> uh, but because you explain the uh, the matter, sometimes you see that the journalist maybe have, uh, has approached you, but you are not the right person to give that statement, so you offer some background information, or this ends up uh, as part of uh, the um, uh, of the story that the journalist delivers. So I think it's uh, an even then more powerful message. It's not just an official uh, stating, because one of the problems is for, for any press secretary, I believe, you cannot overdo with all the interviews, because if you are on, on TV every evening, you know, uh, discussing this topic and that, and like 100 different uh, topics, you also kind of lose credibility, because you cannot uh, know it all, and you also have to get those experts in, um, uh, involved. But th there is a certain, uh, certain part of uh, teaching, I, I, I think, but more I also enjoy, I, I have one, one course uh, here at the uh, RGSL, so I, I, I can do my, uh, my teaching and and um, I've, I've had other opportunities in life to, <laughs> to, to teach, uh, but not um, prof uh, professionally. I, I have, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, I have worked as um, a teacher of uh, politics and law and English uh, uh, for, uh, for a brief period of time in, in high school, and I enjoyed that very much. My father, uh, who has worked as a principal uh, headmaster at school, uh, my grandmother has been a principal, um, uh, my other grandma, uh, the other gr grandmother, she also was a teacher. My grandfather was, uh, was a teacher. Teacher. So, and my, my father was very disappointed when I uh, <laughs> told him that I would uh, join uh, high school as a teacher. He said, "You know, really, nothing better is coming <laughs> out of uh, out of you," because he he was worried that I, I I would never leave because it is difficult to leave. You you get uh, involved uh, heavily, and um, I had uh, 160 students, 10 uh, classes a day, so it was a very very busy uh, time. But I would also say a very rewarding uh, time. What happens in such situation, maybe you have been in one, uh, when uh, press interpret your uh, statements or saying in a way that it is, you know, beneficial, more juicy for them? Yeah, you have those situations and you know everyone is doing their job and uh, you have to, as a reporter, you want to report, you want to uh, have that uh, story, you want to be the first one. There is um, a high level of competition between the journalists, so you always have to uh, keep that in, in mind. Um, 
And many times uh, you, you, you do nothing, unfortunately, and you cannot just, you know, call the editor and say, you know, change that. Uh, our, our country does not operate in that way, thank God. <laughs> uh, so you just uh, try, try, try to um, live with that. If uh, this is a completely wrong statement, then you can issue an official statement uh, to, to uh, you know, correct uh, that. And, and, and we have, and not, not always, this is because of uh, some ulterior motive. People just sometimes get it wrong. And also our, our journalists, uh, I appreciate their work very much because uh, they are also extremely busy. And we unfortunately do not in Latvia have the luxury of uh, just as a journalist spending um, all day focusing on, 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 uh, on one area like international relations. Uh, they would most probably be covering many topics. And uh, then if you haven't been involved in the, uh, in the topic for a very long time, then it's very easy to get it um, wrong. Many times you can uh, make those um, uh, changes. You, I, I would uh, get in touch with uh, with the journalist if this is a news agency. We kindly ask to you know uh, add uh, a comment or or change the title. And and th this happens all the time. Uh, really, uh, they uh, there is also some piece of uh, news that's uh, circulating ar around, and journalists just uh, take that. They they maybe do not uh, um, uh, do all the fact checking and, and 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 things like that. And then they have to. Call and many times um, it it comes uh, comes back in a, in in a unfortunate uh, way. Like uh, we have uh, had recently examples like uh, this. You know, uh, Russia was uh, uh, discussing um, coming up with a list of uh, unfriendly countries, and there uh, was uh, one. Um, a news report saying that Latvia is on the list and uh, Latvian media, they, they, they decided to just uh, take that story. And so even today when our foreign minister was interviewed, the um, public TV, uh, the interviewer asked him, oh, Latvia is on the list. And the minister had to explain, no, Latvia is not on the list and has never been on the list. And we keep uh, saying this uh, since day, um, day one, but you, you, it's very, very difficult then to, to change uh, something. And sometimes, as I said, you just have to uh, live with that if it's not uh, something completely out of uh, out of place. Would you say that the relationship uh, with journalism, as such, is a relationship of trust and trial and an error, in the sense that uh, you perhaps give your trust in a person, uh, perhaps you don't know that uh, prof person's professional, uh, you know, endeavors that much, but after a while you understand. Oh no, this this is not. Uh, the person uh, to communicate with. Uh, trust is always very important, but of course, if you are a professional communicating on behalf of your institution, you cannot just go around saying, you know, I do not trust this journal, so that's why I'm not talking to him or or, or her. This is not a friendship after uh, after after all. This is a professional uh, relationship, and uh, of course, if um, a journalist uh, loses uh, your trust, it will influence your your uh, future relationship with the journalist. Here in Latvia, maybe it's not uh, that um, uh, standard, and we do not have all those um, um, codes in, in place. In the United States, for example, if you have a journalist accredited with the White House, for example, if he or she um, uh, violates uh, the rule of, of the record information, they and they have a specific system in place, uh, they, get, uh, they get banned uh, from uh, those uh, press briefings for a certain period of time. Sometimes half a year, sometimes a year, sometimes they never return. Right, so th th this is like uh, like like that. So we, we we do not have that kind of uh, system, but I think uh, those professional journalists they they, they know the line, um, and they uh, they know how to how to work. But but trust is always very important, and if you also gain uh, uh, trust uh, in the eyes of, of journalists, if they see that you do your your best and you're very you know honest and uh, you you you're not trying to hide uh, something or, or or anything like like that, I think. It, it helps uh, a lot, but always, you know, profession first, and uh, this, this has to be uh, like that. Um. You have also been the depu deputy head of mission to the embassy in Latvia of uh, Turkey. Um, I, I was wondering, you were there almost three years, and uh, most probably, you know, it's a different culture, the different surrounding. Um, it is, you know, not part of Europe, it's a different uh, place of the world. and. Um, ha do you have like one or two, you know, highlights of uh, your work back there that you associate immediately of your experience? 
a story maybe. Yeah, and I, I, I actually, from time to time, I still miss uh, Turkey and Ankara. Since, uh, as, as I said, I, I joined um, foreign service uh, a bit later. Uh, I, uh, I chose um, uh, Turkey, and, and you, 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 you cannot uh, choose your posting. You can put forward your candidacy and then list in, uh, in, in an order of your uh, liking uh, the, the embassies or the postings that you will be happy to, uh, to go to. So I, I chose um, Turkey, Ankara, and. I was uh, happy that I was selected for the post, especially because I wanted to go for a relatively small embassy, because we have only three diplomats uh, there and some uh, uh, local uh, local stuff. And the region is uh, very, very interesting um, uh, to me. And we also cover Iran and Iraq uh, from, from Turkey, so this Middle East experience is is really fascinating. And also, uh, if you are uh, a Latvian diplomat uh, at a relatively uh, small embassy, uh, you gain um, much more experience because you are in charge of all you know, kinds of things, um, uh, even, you know, finances and uh, security and uh, bilateral relation uh, relations uh, with the uh, with the country. Also some, uh, you know, housekeeping and uh, maintenance uh, things that uh, you have to, for example, I, I oversaw um, the building of a new embassy wall and uh, uh, we did uh, a number of uh, renovations. So it also gives you that kind of experience. Also consular work where uh, your nationals are in, in, in crisis. And, and, and like uh, like that, uh, it was uh, very very interesting because, as you say, this is a Muslim country. You uh, you have to uh, live with uh, live with that and the the experiences. I, I had been to Turkey a couple of times before, but uh, uh, never, of course, I had not lived uh, for a longer uh, period. Uh, and uh, I, I think I, I tried to do my best uh, to represent Latvia there to uh, also introduce maybe some uh, some new procedures at the embassy. Um, but I also um, uh, made uh, new new acquaintances and, and, and friends uh, as uh, by, by accident. Actually, I started teaching uh, dance uh, there in, in <laughs> Turkey. Uh, as, as I said, I enjoy teaching. So that's I, I had never worked as a dance teacher and. Uh, and, and Let's hope I never will. And th this was uh, actually called my dance instructor, and I apologize to him uh, uh, in advance, saying like um, uh, I, I've studied um, Lindy Hop. Uh, it's uh, dance like rock and roll. Uh, Ivar Stetters, he's amazing dancer, uh, real professional. And I called him, like saying, you know, Ivar, you will never be believe what's about to happen. I, I will, <laughs> I will go and teach um, the Turkish students uh, Lindy Hop uh, because I wanted to continue my my hobby. And it turned out that in Ankara, no one danced Lindy Hop. And one of the dance studios finally got back uh, to me and, uh, and said, uh, you know, we absolutely love the dance, um, we, but we have n no one who could actually uh, instruct that uh, dance. Maybe you would, um, uh, 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 you know, want to come over and, and do that. So they organized an exam for me. <laughs> so I, I had to um, uh, demonstrate that this is not something that I've come up with. Uh, uh, with myself, uh, with this actual dance that I, I, I know a little bit, and I started um, also doing uh, doing that, and it really helps you because if you are just a diplomat, uh, all you see mainly is of course the official side. You have all the, you know, the the, the relationship uh, with the contacts with the institutions of of the receiving um, uh, country. You have. Uh, all the all the work that uh, that you do, but the people to people contact uh, is uh, more of a challenge if you do not uh, have a hobby or so, uh, a hobby or something that gets you um, kind of more involved with the uh, with the locals. So it helps me uh, a lot. I, I think this is the best uh, experience because uh, they 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 taught me. I'm sure even more than I <laughs> taught them, uh, especially when it comes to Turkey. I also picked up a couple of uh, you know new phrases and words um, of um, of Turkish. We also traveled uh, together and um, uh, took part in, in uh, different dance uh, events and festivals and organized events and every year participated also with uh, with our dance performance uh, locally so it, it, it was a very nice uh, uh, addition to my official uh, work there well you said that there have been also other instances where being able to dance as a diplomat uh, has been very beneficial yeah, actually, uh, one uh, like the same um, uh, instance. Uh, it turns out later on that one of my students is the head of the uh, um, Turkish um, Classical Music Association. And uh, after one of the uh, classes, she comes up to me and says, Yanis, you keep uh, playing this amazing rock and roll band. 
I absolutely love them. Who are they? And I tell her, this is the best Latvian rock and roll band you have, Big Al and the Jokers, and they are the best ones in the Baltics and most probably Northern Europe, and I don't know even if in Europe you have anyone um, like them. And she uh, she uh, tells me, you know what, I want to bring them over for a um, uh, for, uh, for, uh, uh, yearly uh, festival that we have, cl uh, classical music, I should oh, wow. <laughs> remind you. Um, and uh, it's uh, actually happened so we worked together otherwise uh, I, I'm, I'm sure I would have never been able to, to get this uh, amazing Latvian band to Turkey and I, they ended um, up coming uh, twice actually they got uh, you know noticed and they got invited uh, a half year later to, to return and this is uh, you know a country uh, you have 80 million people uh, there uh, states uh, TV you know recorded the whole event and and kept playing it for many times afterwards they performed together with the, the professional um, uh, state uh, radio choir of Turkey. So th this this was uh, quite quite something. And I've also made some uh, personal relationship and very good re working relationship uh, uh, thanks to my um, uh, dancing <laughs> hobby. Uh, like uh, for example with uh, with uh, Scandinavian diplomats because uh, th they are also very much. And uh, this type of dance is uh, becoming more and more popular again. So it always helps if you have. Uh, uh, this hobby or, or any other, of course. Um, I wanted to ask you, as you are, um, you know, working in a public service and uh, you are working with press and with confidential information as well, to some extent, uh, have you ever been in such a situation where you know that, I don't know, some kind of event will be cancelled or uh, my, some information may be relevant to your close ones, but you cannot tell them? Uh, about it and then afterwards maybe they call you and say hey you didn't tell me that you know this concert got cancelled why did you do that uh, my sister was very um, unhappy with one of those <laughs> events where uh, one of the um, singers was put on the blacklist of Latvia and the, and the, the concert had to be cancelled. Um, I, uh, I didn't know about this in, in advance, but even if I had known, I would not have told her. Of course, as, as a diplomat, you also have uh, your security clearance. And if this is uh, state secret, then this is just that. So uh, no, no, no way to use that uh, information. Uh, so um, mainly I've been, uh, my, my current position is uh, the, the press secretary, the so spokesperson of the foreign ministry. But uh, before that, um, and also before um, uh, going on, um, on this posting to Turkey, I um, used to work uh, more with the uh, defense and security issues of uh, the country. As I said, I started at the, foreign, uh, the defense ministry, and also when I moved to the foreign ministry, I was in charge of uh, some... Um, the uh, NATO security issues. Uh, so, of course, uh, you work with state secrets all, all, all the time, and you know the system, you know the procedures, so you are very, very uh, strict about that. But uh, it, it might might be that it uh, is, is not an easy task, right? Also, especially uh, speaking pu uh, publicly, uh, right? You have all this information, and uh, the law uh, does not allow you to <laughs> uh, to say uh, everything you want. This is another reason why I chose for my master's dec um, uh, thesis to focus on uh, the Congress of Vienna. So I was completely sure that I would not be sharing uh, any of my, uh, uh, you know, uh, other understanding or, or knowledge. As uh, professionals find it very difficult. For example, if you, if you, if you study and you you work uh, as a civil servant, uh, and if your area of studies is very, very, you know, uh, closely closely related to what what you do as a professional, to keep those two things uh, separated. Mm -hmm. So you have to be uh, be careful. I wanted to ask. Uh, what was the question? Oops. I was very carried away. Oh yes, my my question is: uh, You have had the well, I would say the benefit, the, uh, also the the possibility to get the security clearance. So, could you please, uh, for the people that are interested in public service, can you please explain how? perhaps hard it is to, to get one. We have um, uh, a law that uh, you know stipulates all those things, so if you're very interested, you can uh, uh, go through the law and, and, and see the uh, procedure. In short, um, so you have to be uh, trustworthy. Mm -hmm. So you provide all the information that is uh, necessary. So, um, and uh, this, uh, of course, uh, puts some limits on your, on your life. So if you are caught speeding, then you have to report that, and if you do not, then it might, um, uh, you know, 
know uh, and for you badly uh, so you have to give all the information also on your relatives and your like all, all, all the things that are and if you change I know your place of uh, residence or, or whatever so you re report uh, again this is evaluated so it takes some time it's also when we um, look for new colleagues it's always a problem because it takes a couple of months sometimes even half a year uh, for that uh, security uh, clearance to be uh, issued and then it has to be renewed um, every every uh, every couple of uh, years so you go through that uh, procedure again so this is really one of the things to to keep in uh, keep in mind because uh, public officials they are uh, just that public so and also when, when it comes and uh, you, you 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 better uh, do your best not to lose your security clearance because if you if you uh, lose it uh, then uh, uh, most probably uh, your career in, in that uh, current uh, form will will end uh, as uh, you cannot uh, have a high uh, governmental position without uh, uh, security clearance I I could carry it right off thinking. Uh, for I, I would say that for a foreign ministry, one of the most not so recent but still recent cases, as it's still in my memory, for example, was Misan's case. Mm. Um, and I was wondering uh, what was the most challenging for the government and for the foreign ministry in this case? What would you say was the greatest? problem to deal with when, I don't know, negotiating with Denmark uh, or... Um yeah, that, that, that was a very specific case and very public one and uh, I should also uh, say that um, not always this uh, public attention uh, helps very uh, very much because uh, I am uh, very fortunate to work um, uh, for a ministry that uh, doesn't need this public pressure to start doing something. Mm -hmm. Also, when it uh, when it got very public, we had been uh, heavily involved with the matter for for a year al already, um, and with those consular issues, it's very difficult because you're not allowed to comment on on specifics. So normally, when when something like this happens, you know, more than a year ago when we had the first, most probably people do not remember it uh, anymore, but when we had the first uh, Latvian national who, uh, uh, who uh, got um, uh, COVID-19, uh, right, in, in China, uh, there was a huge public interest, right, but, but you're never even allowed to confirm if it's, uh, you know, a, a man or a woman, uh, if it's, you, you, you cannot uh, specify on the circumstances and also on, on, on these um, issues, you, you, um, uh, you, you, you cannot uh, share all the information that uh, that you have and sometimes it would uh, would help <laughs> but uh, you of course you, you protect the uh, person's um, uh, interests uh, like uh, if any any of us you know uh, happened themselves in a situation where this uh, help was needed we would most probably not enjoy being it all uh, put in um, out in, in in public and it, it was difficult because it uh, was both international and uh, uh, very very um, uh, strong interest here here back at uh, home so we had to work uh, closely with um, Denmark we did not understand all the decisions so uh, the relationship was really uh, tested but this is what diplomats uh, do also when it's uh, uh, when it's uh, when it's um a crisis situation so we summoned even a, da uh, a Danish ambassador uh, this is not a common thing you know among NATO and uh, European uh, allies uh, so uh, managing all all those uh, different um, areas and also of course directly working with our uh, national and so uh, with the media we also helped um, uh, media representatives to have access mm -hmm. it's not that easy to go to to Denmark and visit you know the the, the place where uh, where our national was uh, Detained, so we also did uh, did that. That was not uh, uh, not an easy task, um, absolutely. And and really, the, there are situations where you you cannot uh, have all the information out out there, and it's also very much up to the journalists to do their uh, their job, and also to the um, parties involved. Th this time around, uh, our national uh, decided, Miss Misan, she, she decided to, to go public. If, if she hadn't done that, uh, even to this day, we would not uh, most probably comment even that much, uh, because if the, the person, there are many people who get uh, detained or get themselves into any other kind of trouble, and they prohibit uh, the um, the foreign service even to tell their relatives, right? They they don't want anyone to uh, to know, and you have to respect uh, that. Many times they make sure that even the embassy doesn't uh, get uh, to know the fact.
I think it's impossible to go uh, in a longer interview without mentioning COVID. You have, uh, you have received the cross of recognition for outstanding work regarding re the repatriation. Uh, so I would, I would just wanted to ask, uh, how much did you feel in control during that period of time? That was um, a huge um, surprise and a very pleasant one, of course, uh, uh, learning that, uh, that I've been awarded. I, I haven't uh, received the, the, the cross uh, yet, and uh, let's hope it, it happens one day. Uh, that's, uh, that period of time, uh, especially the first uh, two to three months, it, it was uh, really quite something. I had uh, survived a coup d'etat attempt in uh, Turkey, in Ankara. Um, I was in charge of uh, the, the embassy. My ambassador was um, uh, on, on holiday uh, then and it was we had already survived a couple of tourist attacks and, and things like that but still it's uh, uh, you know uh, took us by, um, uh, by, by by surprise what, what happened in 2006 and on the 15th of July that that night and all the following uh, days and my uh, colleagues uh, kept um, joking and telling me you know Yanis how else can we entertain you with, uh, uh, with with life and so when you come back uh, life will seem very boring to uh, to you but um, unfortunately they were wrong <laughs> because uh, uh, what what started uh, was really um, first uh, for us it was really uh, the um, uh, the most massive repatriation organization uh, operation uh, for uh, for us uh, we had a very very good uh, team and I was only you know one one tiny part of uh, that but I found out early on that uh, those uh, communications people uh, they uh, tend to get very much involved with the crisis because they enjoy talking <laughs> to each other and uh, many times uh, we shared with all the institutions involved and this is you know um, all our ministries and and uh, the airport and the Baltic and uh, uh, all, all the institutions you have around at least 20 of, of them and those press secretaries and spokespersons they have a very very useful network so we were able to share information very quickly and so we directly helped also the um, uh, decision makers and many times uh, we started also um, uh, to, to do the planning uh, actually to uh, to see I was directly involved with our nationals uh, also as you know the world is round and there was always, you know, uh, 8 o'clock in the morning somewhere. So it was really up to 20 uh, hours a day. You, you, you tried to get at least some sleep uh, to, to be able to, to, to carry, uh, carry on with all the uh, interviews. Uh, also many things happening um, uh, live. Uh, that uh, you are in a TV studio and then you just uh, get, as, as we organize, you know, Poland uh, closed its uh, borders and we had uh, so many uh, Latvian nationals who had to get uh, back and we started planning uh, where should they go, how to send a, a ferry from, from Riga uh, to, uh, to German uh, ports and all this information coming in to you while you are live on TV and I kept uh, sending all the photos uh, to the uh, TV people who, who just put those immediately on the screen and I together with the uh, Minister of Transportation you know, we, we started explaining where they should go and so it was uh, the, the first um, time around we, we, we had to communicate if you are in uh, in the Americas you should go there if you are in the you know uh, Far East uh, you, you head towards uh, you know Turkey Istanbul then a couple of days later uh, Turkey decides to close uh, uh, down also to travelers from Latvia, so we had to re replan it. it. It was a massive operation, the whole foreign service uh, working in, in, in shifts. Uh, also, uh, during the first weekend, we received around 16, 17,000 phone calls. Uh, right, normally we have uh, one um, one colleague on duty 24/7. Uh, we had to increase that, of course, you know, uh, by, by, by many many times. So it, it was uh, really. I, I think we have not uh, fully recovered or even uh, realized because we are still in in, in, in the same situation. And, uh, fortunately, it's not as as bad it is uh, as it was. And we should also uh, keep in mind that you did not have that many countries. Uh, um, that organized uh, these kind of uh, operations. There were some countries who said, you know, you didn't listen to the travel advice. We kept uh, telling you for weeks, don't go anywhere. You didn't listen, so the best of luck to you. So see you uh, after the crisis. And also it's very difficult because people also, individually and personally, they, they find it very difficult to believe.
how, how come that really nothing is happening, you know? Mm-hmm. No planes really, f- like, at all? Yeah, really, uh, nothing. And then you had to organize. We also got our um, honorary consuls involved. And uh, so uh, we have uh, managed to educate ourselves in many new areas, you know, logistics and uh, airplanes and ferries and uh, the capacity <laughs> of uh, all those um, so yeah, it, it was quite. Uh, and uh, to answer your question, I think you, you are never fully in control. You should not also fool yourself that uh, to be under the illusion that you you can control everything. So you, you had to constantly also prepare for the unexpected and to be ready to to change uh, your your. You, you you cannot choose just one course of action and then you know uh, not change anything. Uh, you have, have to, to always, always keep in mind, mind and this, this flexibility and being, being ready, ready to to, uh, to change. change and adjust instantly. So this was a real uh, crisis management exercise in, in, in real life. Uh, I remember that I think it was uh, October of the last year uh, you were meeting uh, with uh, I think it was Slovenian Prime Minister. And Prime after, Minister, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Prime Minister. And then you uh, had to stay in self-isolation because he he was positive of COVID. Um, I wanted to ask, how did it work? Because most probably our foreign minister also met him. So what was the structure or the steps uh, that, that were taken in order to uh, figure out you know, how we're going to work again for the I don't know, next uh, 10, 14 days? Yeah, it has been very difficult. You have this very strict protocol, but of course you also have to work and you have to uh, meet your uh, colleagues and you have to uh, do that. We had, um, and thank God, we had a very, very strict protocol in place with all the, you know, face masks and uh, uh, distancing and um, all the rules. Uh, uh, I was also together with our minister um, uh, during that um, hour and a half long uh, working session that we had with, uh, with the visiting uh, minister and just um so, I do not remember correctly exactly if it was like 12 hours later or something because also the Slovenian side had a very strict procedure so they tested both before the uh, visit and after the visit and uh, this was this unfortunate um, event that on upon his uh, return home uh, the, um, uh, the the minister uh, found the Slovenian minister uh, found out that he was uh, positive actually so you had all the list of all the contact persons and um, together with my minister and uh, to other colleagues, um, uh, we were all uh, uh, put into uh, not only self isolation but uh, quarantine, as you had to cut uh, cut uh, all the uh, all the contacts. Uh, and also, unfortunately, I had to get in touch with. Uh, I had organized um, some interviews for the uh, for the minister, and also those journalists were affected, so they also uh, had to follow the uh, the procedure. But at that uh, time, we had already learned a lot uh, from working, um, uh, you know, remotely. So uh, we 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 can't uh, do that. So it was not uh, as um, as uh, as difficult as it had been if it had happened, you know, earlier. Uh, but, uh, but 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 still, of course, it's also emotionally difficult because you kind of feel that you really come very close to, uh, to that uh, risk of getting infected. And then it was really also a test for us to see if those procedures that we are following, if uh, if those help or not. So luckily uh, they they did because um, I also I had spent, and there were actually at least uh, two of the delegates um, uh, found uh, uh, COVID positive um, uh, later on, and so uh, we were in, in in one room, but we kept all the distance and all the things that we we could. And thank God we um, uh, uh, we didn't uh, didn't uh, get uh, sick. But it's 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 never uh, never easy. Um, uh, also emotionally, because you know everyone has to also cope with that part of <laughs> of, uh, of the things. I I believe. I've gotten the impression uh, from this talk as well as the lectures, that uh, your work is very stressful, very demanding time-wise, energy-wise. So how do you cope uh, with uh, the, the fact that your work day does not end at four? And how do you cope with uh, the fact that you can be you know, summoned uh, during the night? 
Yeah, you have to be uh, ready, and so, so evenings and also uh, holidays, uh, you're always uh, on uh, on duty. The difficult part is that you can never uh, prepare for for that. Uh, as if you knew that there was something, you know, happening on Saturday, then you kind of uh, know it. But you have to be always. Um, uh, ready. One of the first things that I, I did, I got myself a smartwatch so that I can always mm -hmm. see. Even during this interview, I, <laughs> I see there are some some messages already <laughs> coming um, uh, coming in. Uh, one one way to um, uh, work with that is uh, to have a very a specific um, limitation on how long you can be a press secretary. Uh, we have uh, met um, uh, with um, I've met uh, with some of the press secretaries of other foreign ministries, and uh, we've concluded that uh, two years would be an optimum uh, peri uh, period. O otherwise, it's it's really Very too. Nice. And this this is not a profession uh, that, as a diplomat, as I said, uh, you you keep changing your roles right constantly. And um, uh, I, I had no idea that I would end up in, in this uh, uh, position. Someone, uh, usually they, they, they choose uh, someone um Someone, uh, someone different. Uh, uh, this is. Uh, I have not served as an ambassador yet. This would, uh, honestly speaking, this would be a, a position for an ambassador to uh, to to have. Uh, but there is there should be this limitation. We do not have it in procedure. But normally it's around two years. So for me, it's been almost two and a half years. So to be very honest, I'm I'm I'm, I'm happy and I'm also slightly surprised that I've survived this long. As uh, it's uh, both professionally and uh, personally, it is um, uh, demanding, and uh, you have have to kind of recognize uh, that at one point after the first uh, phase of the COVID-19 crisis, I really felt that it was too much. And I kindly said to my uh, state secretary that, uh, sorry, I really have to uh, turn that phone off for at least a couple of days. O otherwise, like, uh, uh, they, they need you in in, in a long uh, term, right? <laughs> you, you will not accomplish too much if you just, you know, collapse at, at one in one, one moment, and one thing that I've learned that you can also burn out by doing something that you really enjoy or you you like. Uh, I, I really enjoy this uh, profession, first of all, and also my current uh, current position. Uh, but it's, sometimes it can be too much. So you, you have to have a hobby or or two. Unfortunately, during uh, these difficult uh, times, um, many things. Um, are not possible, like uh, you know, going to concerts or uh, uh, theater or, or things like that. As I said, one of my hobbies uh, really uh, I enjoy uh, dancing. Uh, so uh, this also hasn't been uh, possible during uh, the past year. So you can do it on your own, and it also helps giving some private uh, classes. Um, uh, now um, also you know um, uh, bicycling. I, I really like like that. I've I, I try to uh, do that as, as much as I can when, when the weather um, uh, permits it. And uh, during this uh, winter, also out of the necessity to, to find some, some new activity, I rediscovered um, skiing again. So I, I really enjoyed um, uh, skiing and also traveling uh, around Latvia a little bit. And then if you have either your bicycle or your skis, then you also uh, all the cities and places that, that you um, have visited before, uh, all of a sudden seem a bit different uh, to you as uh for example, I've uh, now just last um, uh, weekend I I uh, cycled more than 50 kilometers uh, throughout uh, Vanspils, right? So I had visited Vanspils many, many times, but I had never been on on a bike in in, in Vanspils. So I did that, and all of a sudden you really explore more. And I think uh, many Latvians have enjoyed uh, the, the 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 previous uh, summer also by being forced to focus more on local uh, national t the tourism. Uh, let, let's hope uh, people can uh, travel safely this uh, this. Summer summer and go uh, beyond our borders, but also uh, within Latvia there are so many uh, things to be discovered. So you, you always look for some uh, some kind of uh, activity, you need those um, also people-to-people -people, uh, contacts. So I've been very, very blessed with my uh, colleagues who are also posted abroad, so we are constantly in, in, in touch and it also helps this uh, team, uh, team spirit. And also uh, being able to say at one point where you really feel that it's just to, to absolutely Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, just to turn off that phone if it is necessary, and always changing activities. Yeah, but first you have to tell your your boss. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's if you just by uh, yeah by doing that will not um, will not help you too uh, too 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 much. Uh, so yeah, but that, that's really. I would say that we have had a great discussion, and 
I think we're coming to an end slowly. Yeah, so but uh, maybe you have something to ask us or something you would like to say um, that you know we haven't asked you. Oh, I'm, I'm sure there are other topics that we, we could discuss, but I've enjoyed the, the conversation very much and I'm very happy that uh, you've actually started this uh, project. I, I know that uh, you've uh, already had a number of episodes and so uh, how do you find and how do you manage uh, your activities? Because I know, as I said, I was also very much involved with uh, public social work back in uh, high school. I know that, uh, you know, your life is demanding as it is. Uh, to also combine everything and um, in addition to your uh, very busy, you know, um, uh, study uh, agenda and, and everything, uh, I think what you've put together is uh, of great uh, value. How do you uh, manage? How do you find well, time first. and inspiration? <laughs> uh, well, uh, for me, when it, uh, it was March, I think, uh, we had uh, quite a lot of uh, recordings, I think four or five yeah, even. Uh, and we were participating in two projects. We were also making uh, about finances and uh, student finance planning and uh, security of your uh, finances when it comes to banks and uh, different kind of uh, activities that you know are uh, involved uh, with finances. And um, we, uh, at that point, recorded a lot of episodes and uh, I said, uh, in April that I need to write my bachelor's. I, I have to concentrate on that. And for Christopher's then, it was the most difficult part because he had to edit all of the episodes. No, I enjoy it. I really enjoy it. Um, so we, we have, uh, I would say that we have distributed our tasks because for me, it comes before the interview and for him, it is after. Um, but... Um, we, we, we love what we do. Yeah. Um, I think uh, this has taught us so much, even how to ask questions, how we started with, you know, all, only audio. So now eventually we have all of this and uh, it makes us happy that we have it, yeah. that we, we see the development. And uh, the same thing with, I don't know, argumentation with, uh, first we started with all the questions on the paper. Now we speak from the head. Uh, we see how the conversation goes and i think it is also a development a growth mm -hmm. personal growth which makes me happy yeah. i was impressed by how much you had memorized actually right so <laughs> it's not that easy for myself to keep all the <laughs> information you know and, and so yeah. for me it's uh, yeah also just i think we shared the th the fact that we like what we are doing uh during our like in the professional and the personal uh, spheres and yes i really enjoy uh, sitting and editing that those episodes and and i think i have the curiosity to really understand what you have to say what other people have to say and, and i think this is a very great um, in, the, in a way incentive to invite a person for a conversation which which otherwise might not be there because people are busy I just I just love the fact that sometimes you speak with a person personally you can ask the people anything you want basically you are uh, eye to an eye even if it's a lecturer you can't you know ask all the questions you have I don't know about his uh, or her personal career or growth what made the person he or she is today and I I love the part of this that you know we are the ones who state find something sometimes more provocative sometimes more i don't know about their hobbies but uh we are the ones who define the interview and it is wonderful and i think this interview was defined very well i think we understood <laughs> you better as a person not only as a public uh, you know as a public image uh, as a public symbol in a sense for, of the foreign ministry but uh, but really understanding what what's behind that uh, that uh, profession but I want to, uh, you know, point out that, uh, of course, uh, the guest also sets a tone of the interview. It's not like we are, you know, the dominant ones. It's, of course, how engaged uh, the person is, what the person shares, and then we, you know, go with the flow. So, yeah. So really, m many thanks for inviting me. It was uh, also both a surprise and a pleasure. And um, uh, 
I, I think you're also learning something new and might might uh, discover a new taste for maybe another part of future profession mm -hmm. and you might enjoy and I, I think it's uh, it's a very good thing that uh, you know in your very very busy uh, everyday life you you find uh, that um, that time and might uh, might inspire uh, also other uh, others to uh, to do something so uh, uh, really th thanks for for reaching out and I I hope coming. yeah <laughs> thank you for coming. Yeah, so I would say that that's, that's it. All. That's Thank it. Thank you very much. Yay. Yay. Yes. Yes. <laughs>